So we're now going to turn our attention to an interesting little framework that's going to be applied throughout all the case studies we're going to look at with Project Reactor. And it's something that's called the Async Task Barrier Framework. We're just going to take a quick look at how it works now, and then we're going to come back later, or sorry, how you use it now, and then we're going to come back much later after we've talked about mono and flux operators and look at how it's implemented. But I want you to show you what service it provides because it's going to be used over and over again throughout all the examples we look at. So oftentimes you want to be able to test your, your methods using uh, reactive programming, that you've written using reactive programming. And very quickly, we're going to see that they often are going to be running asynchronously in a background thread. And oftentimes, we'll have you know, two to four tests in a given case study. Now, if you're not clever about this, if you don't think about it too hard, what you'll end up trying to do is you'll end up writing a little program that'll spawn a bunch of asynchronous operations, and then the main thread will exit. And you'll be very perplexed when you don't get any results. And of course, what's happening there is the way that the Java virtual machine works is when a process exits, when the main thread goes away, a main thread is something that's called a, a non-daemon thread or a normal thread. And if you have non-daemon threads, if they've all exited, then all the daemon threads will exit too. So the processing of asynchronous operations in RxJava and Project Reactor use pools that are often daemon threads. So if your main thread exits, then all the other threads go away, and then you don't get any results at all, which is very confusing. So to avoid this, we're going to end up using something called the async task barrier to wait for all the asynchronous computations to complete before the main thread of control exits. And that's exactly what it does. It's, it's a form of what's known as barrier synchronization, which is uh, a way of waiting for a bunch of things to finish or a bunch of things to start, to be initialized. So let's say we have an example. Here's a main entry point into a test program. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up registering all of the methods we want to test that run asynchronously with the async task barrier. So we register, register, register all these things. And then they will start to run once we do something down here, uh, which we'll look at. And this, you can also do synchronous methods, but that's kind of boring, so we're not going to focus on them. But you can do asynchronous, asynchronous methods. And once you have registered the methods you care about, then you can go ahead and tell the async task bearer, run all of these test methods, run these, these tasks. And they start up, they all go off and do their thing in the background. And then the main thread of control will block until all the other background computations have finished. And so, in essence, the async task barrier and its use here with the blocking call plays the role of a barrier synchronizer, which again is a, a common synchronization technique. It's, it's kind of interesting because if I look at the history of how I've taught these courses over the years, for a long time we spent quite a bit of focus on classic concurrent object-oriented Java programming. Things like Java threads, Java synchronizers, other synchronization techniques, there's a whole slew of them in Java, and there's a whole slew of threading techniques in Java too, threading frameworks like the executor framework and so on. And over time, as these modern, either reactive or stream-oriented frameworks have come out, and, and for that matter, structured concurrency, we're spending less and less time on synchronization because those things are now done for you in the way in which the computations take place concurrently or in parallel. But there still is a benefit of knowing how they work, and this is a good example of that. So the async task barrier framework will allow tasks to be registered with it and run. And it just ensures that the main thread doesn't exit until all the asynchronous processing is finished. Now, like I said, we're not going to go through the implementation of the methods here right away. We're going to wait until we get done with a deeper discussion of how fluxes and monos work, because we'd get into topics that are really hard to understand without knowing the details. But we will cover those when the time is right. But just be aware that I use this for all the examples because I want to be able to let them run to completion without having the program exit before the computations are finished. Now, you can also imagine using a mechanism like this in other circumstances as well. So I use it primarily for test programs. But you can also imagine using a task bearer-like feature for more general purpose uh, parallel computing, where you want to spawn a whole bunch of tasks and then wait for them to finish before you go on to the next phase. And we might have some time to talk about that. That was more likely to be the case if you're doing some kind of parallel computations uh, that are embarrassingly parallel, like some kind of 
say, image rendering, where you've got a bunch of images and you want to render them in parallel using multiple cores. So this, this technique can be useful for more things than just testing. But that's primarily how I'm using it here is for testing.